It's the KSO Show. I'm Derek Young, joined by Grant Flanders. And I think this might be the first time all year that we're doing the Monday podcast <laughs> on, on Monday. <laughs> it's the big picture look as we uh, start the game week where the Kansas State Wildcats will be taking their first true road game. Obviously, they did have a neutral site contest that was actually technically a home game in week one in Arlington when they hosted Stanford inside AT&T Stadium and won that ball game 24-7. to then they played Southern Illinois the following week. Was not pretty. Skylar Thompson was injured. They escaped Manhattan with a 31 to 23 win. Yep. And this past week, an impressive win without Skylar Thompson at the helm. A split quarterback duty between Will Howard and Jaron Lewis, and the Wildcats are victorious. Take care of the football again. The defense looks great, and they beat Nevada by three touchdowns, 38 to 17. While they came into the game as the underdog, so. Uh, probably, and I said it, you know, in our four downs, and it's one of our analysis and reaction pieces after each game that I encourage you to read if you aren't a member to sign up and have a chance at that. But I called that one of Chris Kleiman's best wins since he's mm-hmm. been the head coach at Kansas State. I don't think that it is a debate that it is one of the top five wins for Chris Kleiman at Kansas State. You and I certainly think it might be the third best win, follow probably right after both of the victories against Oklahoma, of course. Um, to, mm-hmm. to top those, the Sooners are. You know, on a schedule in two weeks, by the way, and Kansas State will face them at 2.30 on Fox at home. So hopefully the bill will be rocking for that. But it's time to kind of glance or give our first take at what we think we're going to see or what this game means on Saturday's Kansas State first true road game of the 2021 season. They are in Stillwater and it's also not just the first true road game, also the first Big 12 game of the season for both clubs. Oklahoma State so far this year. They struggled against Missouri State, but came away with the win. Struggled against Tulsa, but came away with the win. Looked like they were going to get blown out for a sec um, on the blue turf in Boise by the Boise State Broncos, but came back, won the game by a point. Um, Tough to get a good gauge on Oklahoma State. They're actually a little bit banged up on the offensive side of the ball, which is already kind of a side of the ball that wasn't very good to begin with Mm -hmm. to enter the season, or at least an inexperience as they lost a lot of dynamic weapons on the offensive side. I think this is kind of a big game, uh, kind of a big game. This is a big game, <laughs> but it's also a winnable one and maybe the most winnable of the first three league games because after that you have Oklahoma and Iowa State, and we keep saying how each game has a bigger implication yeah. because of how serious things get as you move forward in the season, and it's definitely the case. But we always said, you know, these first four games are critical for Kansas State because they are far more winnable than maybe the Oklahoma or Iowa State game. You know, three tests down – Three tests passed. This yeah. is this is the fourth one. Probably not as much of a swing game as Nevada was last week, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But if you want to go to Arlington, I think you have to win this game. Absolutely, and I don't think. And you're right about that. I think um, it's it's you know still it's, it's more important than it was last week, but it's also not as tougher of an opponent as I think Nevada was uh, offensively. And I don't know if it's more important than last week's game. Oh, yeah, I guess uh, that may, is Maybe for the Big 12 For the is. Big 12 picture, but for you're right. For the Big 12 picture, a, it is. But, it, but it, you're Nevada right, really Nevada's game, if they beat Oklahoma State, that doesn't all of a sudden become the third best climb in victory, whereas Nevada stays up there as one of his best yeah, victories. Yeah, and if, but if you lose to Nevada, you're 2-1, and one, and you, you're looking at maybe a 2-2 two two start Absolutely. or a 2-3 two and three start. Now you got that... Nevada, the Nevada one gave them a cushion, which yep. is why I think was probably more important than this game. But if you're dreaming of the, you know, the Big 12 championship mm-hmm. game in Arlington, this game is far more important. And I don't know that you can get there without winning this game because no. if you lose this game, you, you know, it makes the Oklahoma and Iowa State game look that much more daunting. Exactly. So, and, you know, the, through non con, it was kind of a roller coaster because Southern Illinois, we saw Will Howard have to go into the game in the second quarter and he really struggled he did not play well and that was the the Nevada was the test to make sure this team could still be on the right track I agree and Howard made sure and Lewis both did not turn the ball over and Howard had a really good fourth quarter along with you know all of his weapons and that's exactly what we said Howard needed to do and it does make things a lot more enticing going into Big 12 play knowing Howard can still play he can get through we I think we both can believe that He's capable of getting through an Oklahoma State game. Oklahoma, the next the next week might be a tougher test, and you hope Skylar Thompson comes back from injury. And it's a very, you know, uh, nice to know that Skylar will still come back this season. You know, as long as his recovery still goes according to plan. Um, but going into this game, Howard still needs to be sharp, and he might be going up against a tougher defense. Tougher defense. 
maybe a lesser offense. Absolutely. Um, I, you know, we haven't believed in Spencer Sanders for quite some mm-hmm. time, and he, he, his woes in the past seem to still be there for them. Uh, they kind of won against Boise State the same way that Kansas State won with, against Nevada with yep. the run game and defense. There was a point in the third quarter where Spencer Sanders was doing less than Will Howard and Jaron Lewis did. He was two for eight for 22 yards at one point in the third quarter. He has struggled through the air. That's the one problem he has had, but he is also probably one of the most athletic quarterbacks K-State will see up to this point. He's the toughest one on the ground, I think, that they'll see all season. I, I think that is correct. I don't think well, Max not, Dugan is that guy. He's per, and Purdy's, Purdy's, not, Purdy's not that guy. Jared Deggie's Sanders not. is, I think, yeah. athletically he's very good, but sometimes he's also not very smart. When running the ball, he sometimes goes he's right just, into defenders, but he is the most gifted, I think. When he's at his worst, it's it's similar to Will Howard. Obviously, yes. he's more athletic than Will Howard, but they when they are both at their worst, they are giving the ball to the other team mm-hmm. at, a exactly. signif- at a significant clip. K-State and, will uh, hope to keep that going. And in – I think you're going to see both quarterbacks from Kansas State again. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, since it kind of worked, yeah. why they would divert from the Will Howard, Jaron Lewis kind of. At least in the first uh, half again. Two, yeah. yeah, two QB system that they threw out there. So I imagine we'll see that again. And I wonder if Oklahoma State might do something similar. And mm-hmm. and Spencer Sanders and Shane Illingworth are two different quarterbacks. That yeah. you, but in the past, I think Spencer, Shane, Spencer Sanders' legs would probably worry me more. Yeah for a Kansas State defense, and we'll dig more, probably more into this when we Absolutely. do the matchups. Um, I think that's Wednesday. But I think I'm far less concerned about his legs with this year's defense just because they're playing so much faster. But implication-wise, I think Oklahoma – I don't know if Nevada is better or if Nevada is worse than Oklahoma State. I guess I don't, I'm, what I should say is I don't know if Oklahoma State is a better football team than Nevada, at I, least not yeah. a significantly better team. Than Nevada, they just pose different challenges. Absolutely, Nevada scared you from an offensive standpoint with their firepower that they might have with mm-hmm. Carson Strong and quarterback. You don't have to worry about that with Oklahoma State, but but they're going to make. They are good enough defensively to make Will Howard and Jaron Lewis throw the ball to beat them, and so this might be the first time we that Kansas State um, needs one of them to emerge in that department to yeah. win a game. Absolutely. And from an implication standpoint, big picture standpoint, maybe you need to see that. So maybe it would be reassuring if we did see that. They're going to have to win this game in a much different way, I think, than they did against Nevada, just because Oklahoma State's defense is going to be able to dictate what they do a little bit. Yep. Uh, They're not going to make running that easy like Nevada did. No, especially not in the second half, fourth yeah. quarter, when you're, you're running the same play over again and you know it's coming and, and you can't stop it. Mm-hmm. But I think the win in Nevada kind of – there is some relief here because you do have some cushion. Yep. But if you want the special season, because now we're, we're there, I think they won that swing game that changes you from a possible six-win season to a possible eight-win season. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying eight is the, the floor at this point, but it's getting closer to being the floor just because you won those three ball games in the non-con. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think for, for, from that standpoint, is there is that cushion. But if you're – trying to if you're still saying yep. this team needs to make it to Arlington for the Big 12 championship game this is a must win you can't lose this and expect to be Oklahoma the next week even with the healthy Skylar Thompson and even if you do it makes it that much harder for you because you already have that one loss right. to an Oklahoma State team and then once you get the two losses uh, then you're, for, yeah, then you, it's pretty you have, much toast because then you've lost your first two Big 12 games, and if you want to get to Arlington, then you're probably going to have to be perfect the rest of the year mm-hmm. with still seven games left on a schedule. So that's yeah. If we're talking Big 12 championship, this is a must win. Absolutely, and and whereas next week's doesn't become a must win if they lose this week because it's still the t- one of the toughest opponents in Big 12, and you could still meet that that team, Oklahoma, again in Arlington, if you are perfect the rest of the way. Yeah, next week, then next week's game comes to you can kind of gauge and compare yourself exactly. to a team of that stature. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you want to win. You never want to say that, but it's, yeah. like you said, maybe not a must win at that point. Yeah, if for, they, the, for them it is, but for, for media it's it's more of, and for people yeah. knowing that they can still it, have a path it, to it's Arlington. It's probably more of a must win. If Kansas State wins and it's 4-0 facing Oklahoma, it does not become a must win for Kansas State if they want to make it to the Big 12 championship game. Yeah. And we'll talk about it then in the big picture. But it probably, no matter what, is going to be a must win for Oklahoma because they've struggled this year already. And they need to get that payback on the Wildcats yeah. already. And 
they're thinking, you know, this is the best team the Lincoln Riley's had. And, you know, they lose to Kansas State. And then you almost have to wonder, can do you kiss the big uh, national title shot goodbye <laughs> as well? That's still, even though as bad as or as poor as they've looked at times this year, they that's still on the table for them. Yeah. Um, I mean, if that was their expectation I mean, entering yeah. the season, so. we're going to talk about it more next week. But if they are able to win this game this week and then beat Oklahoma next week, you're looking at, I mean, squarely at the best team in the Big 12 at that moment in time. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be debated. Yeah, debated, and and then, and then the leading I, up to the and Iowa State yeah. game would be huge. Yeah. And then the Iowa State game doesn't isn't even a must win at that point. It's a must win because of probably the implications of the rivalry and recruiting and stuff of that nature. But um, not in terms of the Big Twelve championship appearance. And mm-hmm. then at the uh, if that's the case, um, probably talked way too much. <laughs> or we we got into the implications, not big picture, not just Oklahoma State, but also Oklahoma <laughs> and Iowa State. So we did three episodes in one. Hope you enjoyed it. You've been listening to the KSO Show for Grand Flanders. I'm Derek Young. Tell your friends, please and thank you.